All right, everyone, welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster. My name is Guys Bowling, and this is a very special episode because we are going to be celebrating the 30th anniversary of Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. But um, I didn't want to do it alone. I also didn't want to feel uh, old all by myself. So, so the people on, I think, are around the same age as me and probably experienced it uh, for the first time around the same age. Um, one of these guys has actually been on the show, I think this is your third time, unless I lost track uh and the other is surprisingly uh his first time on so i will uh i will lob up uh the guy who's been on before his uh name is david gonzalez he is the founder of realtalkinc.com he also created the real chronicles podcast and it's horror movie offshoot chop talk i love introducing you because i feel like i'm actually knowing what i'm doing when i introduce you and all your credits <laughs> yeah man it's, it's like it's like talking to an old friend every time we, i jump yeah. on here very, very happy to be back um i uh have a lot to say about this movie all good things but uh i do want to talk a lot about the geographic inconsistencies <laughs> yep yep, yep. This, that should be a fun one <laughs> uh and then uh news of the podcast i asked before like what did you want me to call you before uh we hopped on it was gonna be jc or merc i was just gonna go with merc so i'm gonna go with that uh, you know, there's a uh, work with the movies on uh, Instagram, uh, follow each other uh, for a while on that platform and like kind of run in the same nerd uh, little press circle. So welcome to your first time on Back to the Blockbuster. I'm happy to be here. You know, like I've always talked to you online. I'm like, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Every time I listen, I, I give you a little comments here and there. So very happy to be here. This- other this other times I've been wanting to be there, be in certain episodes. I just love the topics. So hopefully this is the first of me. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome too. And like I want to point out something about Merck because there's certain people that follow me, and I think Dave is the same way that there's certain people that know what like things are in my wheelhouse. So like Merck will just tag me in like you know the, the trailer for like Outer Banks will drop, and he'd be like, "Yo," and he'll just tag me in it. Like <laughs> this is this is all this is all you like you know. Gossip Girl reboot, like, yep, yeah, all you man. I know you. I know you be watching this stuff. <laughs> My dude, dude we're, we're so close. We're close, so close to the season premiere. I know, I know. When I, I saw I Georgie, wait. when I saw Georg- bro, when I saw Georgina Sparks, I was like, let's go. Like, that's let's all I go. Need. I still gotta watch the final episode of the one. I haven't finished it. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yo, yo, it's great when like people just know the stuff that you like, and yeah, especially like, like when Berg started, he watched like the OC for the first time, and he was like DMing me like. <laughs> like he watched it pretty he watched it pretty quick too it was like that reminds me of me yeah, if I, like, I, sat down. <laughs> no because i actually started it when i got covid i got covid like a few days before christmas year, so i was out for like 10 days there you go david knows that i barely sleep even when i'm at work so since i had covid my ass was up to like four or five o'clock in the morning i was just like there were quick episodes to max is on hbo max there was no commercial, so 40 minutes, boom, I was knocking down like seven, eight episodes a day. And it's fucking addictive, man. It's hard It's hard not to just keep watching it. <laughs> I tried to watch that show a year and a half ago. I know, you thought because, like, maybe because you like yeah, Gossip Girl that you might the like this. And... I did not like this show at all. <laughs> I, get, you know I totally get, Both. I totally get, it, you know what's funny, like, thinking about, like, like 2020 hindsight now, like yeah. I can see, you know, you're from the area, right? You're from the right. from that and area, and they film and they film and that, a lot of it here, yeah. And I and I love Gossip Girl, and I'm from the area, so I kind of right. I kind of see where the where the vibe for me with Gossip Girl comes from. Yeah, for sure. And I will say, one has aged more than the other, or better than the other, and that is Gossip Gossip Girl. Still, kind of holds up a bit more than like aspects of the OC. Um, do you like before we start? Do you like the new, the the reboot? Yeah. So you know what? I didn't like the pilot. I, I remember I watched the first episode and I was like, oh, this isn't this isn't gonna be for me. I feel like they're like trying too hard to like kind of copy like with certain characters, like, oh, this is clearly the Chuck and this is clearly the Dan. And like mm-hmm. but then like as it went along, it got like a little better. I'm glad I stuck with it. Like I it yes, it's, same here. it holds it pretty good, yeah. And I'm excited for season two as well. I feel like it's been a long a little bit of a long wait uh for it. And I'm glad they brought yeah. back Georgina. I I will take more of Michelle Trachtenberg all day long because yeah, she's probably like one of my favorite characters from that original show. She was just like so I outrageous. personally think we're gonna we're gonna get to everybody except probably um Serena. Yeah, I you know what? I feel get to everybody. I think I think we can get to everyone. I think that like Blake Live is gonna be like, oh no, I'm pregnant, I can't. <laughs> I'm so busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> 
but uh, before we get started, I, I know I mentioned like some of the stuff that you guys are involved with, and I know that David, you've been on uh, a few times that people already know, but like uh, for those who don't know, let them know a little bit about uh, Real Talk and then your two podcasts. Uh, yeah, your, so we're uh, writing for Creative Real Talk six, wow, six years ago, uh, six years ago, and been writing reviews ever since uh kind of shifted the site a little bit since then i no longer do news on the site it's just strictly uh film reviews award season talk the podcast uh also like you mentioned before i have a horror podcast that focuses on 80s horror um i love AR and i always like to put a, a light on that genre uh yeah and you can also find my work through various films on Rotten Tomatoes. I have my reviews linked on there and then Yeah, you're one of the better people on Rotten Tomatoes, I think. I think you're pretty fair about like all your I, reviews are usually pretty fair. You know you know what's funny? Like being in this in a different circle now that I can like when I go to these press screenings, I feel like I'm a lot I guess I'm the nice guy. I'm much yeah. more <laughs> open than other people. Like I was at I was at a press screening for Black Panther a couple of weeks ago and you know, yeah. I'm like sitting there, like I, I, you know, it's 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 not as good as the first. I'm willing to admit that. I love the movie. I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. But yeah. then I'm like, I'm in the bathroom after the screening, and I hear people saying, "Oh, this is like lower tier Marvel," and I'm like, "What? The uh, fuck are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. Like, are, we, are we serious right now? So it's yeah. like, it, it's, like I feel like I am a little bit too nice sometimes, but you know, I always try to be fair. Like I. Tomorrow, I'm tomorrow. Like full disclosure, I'm watching Babylon tomorrow. It's my most anticipated film of probably like the last two years. I love Damien Chazelle, yeah, as G, sure. you already know. So like, if I, I have to be so fair with that movie, but it's going to be so hard for me to be like, oh man, this movie is not as good. <laughs> but yeah, like I, 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 I definitely try to always be fair. So I appreciate the kind words there. Yeah, no, for sure, and because I think it's hard to. I mean, like. Uh, when I go to press screenings in LA, because a lot of these people you connect with kind of on Twitter, and then like you're in person with them sometimes, and uh, they'll mm -hmm. have some like hot, they'll have some hot takes while you're sitting down next to them, and you're like, oh, like I don't even <laughs> I don't know like what like conversation we could have right now, um, and you know, I and then you sometimes it's hard to tell like who's like saying certain things about projects because they want like the attention on social media, like oh, I'm I'm gonna say I didn't like something yeah. because of you know X Y and Z. So uh, at least with you, you can tell like. Friend. Yeah, I don't think you would like lie and be like, yo, I loved it. And like secretly you're like, no, no I, like I mean, perfect <laughs> example. I was probably one of the only people in the state in, in, in this world that liked Blonde. Like JC is another person, but I took a beating for liking Blonde. But I also <laughs> took a beating for not liking Don't Worry Darling. I went rotten that at Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't really like the movie. But like, so yeah, I always try to be fair. But like Blonde was one that I... Had, I took a complete beat down for liking. <laughs> Everyone else like, love it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get like advice from you because like we are also kind of spinning off our show uh, and doing something else with another podcast. Mm. Uh, as if I don't have enough to do already. Um, but it's just, <laughs> but it's like, <laughs> but I, you know, it's it's when you want to do something that's kind of catering to, like one thing and like the main show is so different, like you kind of have to uh, try to do something else if you want to like kind of attempt to like talk about other movies and like be more specific about uh certain things that you're talking about so i figured it's yeah. a year in it's a year in so i might as well just try and see, see oh, what yeah for sure listen i mean i have two podcasts a website press screenings on the regular i'm about to have a baby so like i trust yeah, me I know, <laughs> I know what i know what having a lot on your plate is uh definitely and uh and jc like how did you kind of get started with like all the movie stuff um, well, no, I've always been a movie. I've always been a movie lover. And then on my regular page, which I actually followed you on my regular page before I even made one, like, I remember when David told me that, he's like, oh, this is my former writer. I was like, hold up. I was so shocked. I'm like, hold on, G Rose used to write for you? Because, like, I followed your page from my way before I even had a uh, movie page. So it's just like, yeah. you're actually one of my big inspirations when it comes to starting a movie page. So thank, oh, thank you, you for everything you. And, and so awesome. yeah, so it was just like I would just like, yeah, I never told you that. No, I know that's um, cool. I think that's that's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, so I it was no just idea. like I would like like a lot of people that start movie pages. I would just on my regular page. I would like every year. I you know I would post like my movie tickets. because I was like, oh, this is what I'm watching right now. I would post like little like if it's a movie I loved, I like I remember I posted a big review for La for La La Land. Right. Like everybody was like, oh, I haven't heard of this movie. Yet. 
And every year I would post like, oh, these are my top five best. And then, you know, there were people like, oh, you should start a a movie Instagram. I was like, I don't know, like, you know, like that takes a lot of work. And and then there's also obviously people that have been telling me, like, oh, start a start a YouTube page around my time to camera show. Like, like I could do a podcast because podcasts are just voice, just talk it's with right, your voice. Right. So, but it was pretty much like yeah, my friends just telling me, oh, start a movie page. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it. And then my my current wife, but she was my girlfriend at the time. She came up with the name because I was I was trying to you know, think of something creative. I didn't want to say like Gene movie reviews. You know, so many right, people right. just have their name. So, oh, you know, yeah. She was like, "Well, you love Deadpool, you know, you know." So that's how that that name came of it. And then I started the page July July 2017 or no June 2017. And unfortunately, my first review, my first ever review was for All Eyes on Me. Not the best movie. <laughs> <laughs> Not the best. Like, every, every anniversary, I post that review. And I'm like, yeah. Like, I remember I was just like, I really didn't have much to say. But I was like, that was the, that was the first movie. I'm like, all right. And I remember the first trailer I watched was, I mean, the first trailer I posted was Marshall. So that shows you how long I started the page. That's 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 really cool. It was funny too, like when I started G Rolls, I did that as a hobby, and I remember like my friends were just like, "Man, why are you posting shit like that on like your Instagram?" Because you know, of course, everyone wants like every, <laughs> everyone wants everyone's like everyone wants pictures of like your food and whatever, whatever shit you have on Instagram. <laughs> Not nothing that really interests you. But then I had like one friend that was like, "Why don't you like make a business page and see what you can do with it?" And I'm glad I did because I think at the time when I started mine, it was like a really good time to do it. Uh, there weren't a ton of them around yet. Now there's a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but it, the cool thing about there being so many is that, like, for stuff like this, you get to like reach out to people and be like, when you have shows and stuff like this, they're like, they kind of want to like, like, kind of get better at this kind of stuff. And they're like, hey, can I hop on and like talk about the movie? Like, I have a page. Like, they may not be working for like big press outlets, but they're still, you know, just as passionate about this stuff as anyone who's really working in it. So that's the cool thing about like seeing like all these other pages kind of pop up like and more and more of them popping up uh and you i i think you should try the youtube page thing man even if you have to start like uh just kind of doing like audio reviews over like trailers and stuff like that like over you can start like that until you get more comfortable yeah i kind of want to because i'm like i I realize that a lot of people that do that get press screenings because like me and dave had talked to us out there's certain people that we know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. who we don't feel Mm-hmm. Are that good at viewing movies and and get freaking screenings? We'd be like, mm-hmm. I'd be like, I know more than this person, but I'm like, I hate that I'm so shy because I'm like, if I get on YouTube, I'll definitely get press screenings. Said person could get it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I love the. So I, don't like, know, I, I don't even know who it's about, but I love the like subtle like. Mm-hmm. But I know you know the certain people. I know the certain people that you probably be like, yo, this is not that good, but like you probably don't mind because you get press screenings through Joe Blow and stuff. Well, there, there's me. people in I mean, LA. Like, there, if, uh, there's people in LA for sure that like they're like, "How'd you end up here?" Like, uh, and they have like they don't have like a ton of fo- yeah. It's funny. Yeah, it's yeah. I love when he invites me because I'm like, yeah, I get to go like that. But there's certain people. I mean, like I said, you probably feel the same about certain people. You'd be like, "How the hell do they get screened?" It's because yeah, you just talking nonsense. Your reviews. Well, that's cool. I mean, I'm gonna give you a compliment too because I when I when you post news stuff. There's certain times where I'd be like, "How do you post that so fucking fast?" And like, like put it together like well, pretty fast. Well, I'll actually tell you how. It's, everybody always asks is that. Well, I work in a warehouse, and my boss is really cool. Usually, I listen to podcasts, but here and there, I'll look up to see what when there's movie news. My wife, she has a she works in an office, so I will usually just send her the movie news, yeah. and she'll make the headline a caption. And if I have, because usually what I do to just not waste too much time. Yeah. I'll just copy and paste a previous post about about that movie or something and switch up the words like, oh, switch up like if it's a casting now, but it's like, okay, said person's joined now. So she'll usually call me and then I'll just have her rewrite the whole caption. I'll tell her what to write. Yeah. And then she just sends it. So I copy and paste it, post it, and then I'll just go back to work. That's the reason I'm able to post so much during the day. So if it's it wasn't a team, it's her, like fucking team probably... effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like she's been really helpful for the last couple of months. So, but. If she could have helped me, I would probably have to post every news after I get out of work five ten weeks. Wow. Yeah. I mean, and, and and as you know, like it's always like with some of this stuff, you have to be like right when it drops if you want like the yeah, most like, attention for it. I'll get, I'll get, <laughs> sometimes I'll be like, I'm like, come on, baby. It's like you could 
like certain news, I'm like, you know, like when it's like a small indie, I'm like, whatever, I don't care about post like an hour or two late. But let's say it was like, oh, breaking news or like the first trailer for, you know, like when well, the first trailer for Avatar drop, I think I had like 10 minutes into work and I said yeah. to her, I'm like, yo, babe, come on, this was this was big. Please do it real quick. I know you're busy, but come on real quick. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, it was funny because like my buddy Owen texted me. He's he's gonna be doing like the spinoff show with me uh, in a couple of weeks. But he was like, this morning he was like, you posted that Avatar trailer today, didn't it drop last night? I was like, yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't really care. And like you know, and I, I did say in case you missed it, you know, just in case <laughs> you were, were yeah, watching like, Monday Night Football. Post, I was like, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm like, I'm like, I already posted the last one like two weeks ago. I'm just copy and paste the whole caption. Because I the last the last time I had posted on like new trailer, I'm like, boom, just just real quick edit, bang, it, put it in. There. It's also the because it's you, you, also the algorithms. Like I I yeah I, like, yeah, I it, post I, I post I post a lot on Instagram, obviously, but I I I've picked up my Twitter game a lot in the last like two years. Yeah, and sure. I do a lot of I do a lot of press for, for reactions or whatever, which is what publishers like nowadays. Yeah. I I feel they, like they that's like what they want reactions. Yeah, they like. I feel like they care more about your first reaction than they do the review sometimes, depending on the outlet. But uh, like, for example, like I posted my Black Adam first reaction, and it got over a thousand likes on Twitter. Yeah, that was, that was like a popular six, one. And like, and it got six hundred retweets or something. Then yeah. I posted my Black Panther one, and it got like a couple of like hundred. And then like yesterday, I saw Pinocchio, and Guillermo reposted it for me. Yeah. Not like I'm Frederick Guillermo del Toro, but he just <laughs> like he liked and retweeted it, and I was and, and that, that started getting following. Exposure. Yeah, so it's like it's so weird. It's all the algorithms on this. Thing. Yeah, it yeah, it's all timing too. I remember I posted my first reaction for Smile, and like the movie page retweeted it, and Kyle Gallner, who's in the movie, he retweeted it, and then that helps a lot. And I was like, oh, well, that's cool. Like, it really is timing, and like like you said, the algorithm. Because sometimes you'll drop something on Twitter, and it's just like, <laughs> like nobody yeah. responds oh, to yeah. it, <laughs> like whatsoever. Yeah, no, and, when, when David had, <laughs> oh, what were you saying? David had like the per the per no, so David had like the perfect intro to his Black Adam stuff. Like any wrestling fan got it right away when he talked about electrifying. I oh, guess, yeah, yeah. When you mentioned that, I'm like, now it kind of makes sense why it took off because of all the wrestling. Like, puns that, that was that, I threw that in was there. that was a perfect one for for that movie and for him. Uh, you also you also know what uh, works has been working out really well too is if if I guess it's a timing thing as well is the YouTube Shorts because uh, they're trying to compete with like the reels and like TikTok and all that stuff. So if you can actually like trim something down to just a minute, like whether it's like your reaction to a movie or like if you want a snippet of like a trailer, like they they can really take off too because they're really trying to get people to use them uh, a lot. So yeah, there's so many different avenues to like do this stuff on now. Like anyone can do it at this point. It seems like, oh, for but sure. the, yeah, yeah, like it, yeah, man, yeah. That's not. It's it's cool to see though. I mean, it's cool that the fight. Like you know, I kind of wish that I was more like TikTok savvy, and <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm just not thir- I'm just oh, I'm, yeah, still, take, I'm just not time, I'm just not thir- I'm not thirteen, and I don't understand like how yeah, it works. Man. <laughs> 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 Jenny has been trying to get me to get to do reactions on TikTok. Do this essentially. She's like, "Why don't you just say the same thing you tweet, but on TikTok?" I'm like, "Nah, man, that takes time. I just, yeah. I just like think, right? And I'm good to go. I don't need that. To, I'm good to go. Yeah, yeah TikTok is something else. All righty, then. Well, let's get to what we're going to be uh, talking about today. It is uh, Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, which was released on November yes. 20th, 1992. It's still weird that it's uh, 30 years old. I do truly, truly. I was born. I was born. I was, I was seven. Year. I was seven. I guess. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Uh, uh, it is the sequel to 1990s Home Alone and stars Macaulay Culkin, Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern, John Hurd, Tim Carey, Brenda Fricker, and Catherine O'Hara. And it follows young Kevin McAllister as he is separated from his family once again. This time on their family vacation in Florida, and he ends up in New York City. Uh, it received uh, mixed reviews from critics, actually worse reviews than the first one from critics. Um, and even though it wasn't as financially successful as its predecessor, it still pulled in a lot of money, $359 million worldwide on a $28 million budget. And we can kind of talk about later why maybe it didn't uh, do as well as the original. Because I, I didn't realize until I looked it up that the original was number one for 12 weeks in a row. 
And it had I can, like I can answer that. I I can answer that right now, G. <laughs> All right, wait, go because go for this, it. Because <laughs> this, this movie, because this goddamn movie is two hours long. Why is this movie two hours long? <laughs> it's true. You're like right. a family movie like this, ninety minutes is that's it. It's perfect. That's a sweet spot. Um, well, you know, I always kind of like to look back on like when you guys kind of first uh, discovered. Uh, something like this so david when i mean did you see it in theaters or you remember seeing it in theaters when you were a kid? yeah I, I actually did i actually this is one of my strangest childhood memories so i saw the first one on vhs uh like in 1991 ish uh mm-hmm. loved it uh and i was six at the six or seven at the time when we went to see it in, in december of 1992 right so i'm like i'm all in didn't know you know I'm a, I'm a little kid, so I'm just enjoying the movie or whatever. And for some strange reason, after the movie, I decide to just run out of the theater, like jet <laughs> from the theater. No idea. I can't tell you why. I don't know what. <laughs> JC, can away att- JC can attest to this. My Cuban mother was not very pleased with what I just did. You were um, just bolting out of the theater. And <laughs> what? Yeah, did, so you get, did you get scared or something? What no, I was just like, I think, J- I, I think JC nailed it. He's like, I guess I just wanted to be like Kevin and run away from my parents. Well, my parents. <laughs> but no, like I, I, uh, I remember liking it enough. But like as I grew older, and it became kind of a staple for me. The, uh, the music in the movie, top notch. It's the first. Yeah. It's the first time I heard a lot of these Christmas movies. Awesome. Uh, sh- shout out to the Talk Boy because I had one right away after the after it became I a had popular one too. thing. I had a Talk Boy. Um, but yeah, like I, I do. I think it's better than the first. No, there's a lot of more issues with it. But do can I say I still enjoy it? It's a staple. I watch it every single year, back to back with the first one. Um, I ne- I dare not touch the rest of the series, but uh, the first two are definitely near and dear to my heart. Nice. You know what? The third one I watched out of curiosity last year because I hadn't seen it. In, I hadn't seen it in so long, uh, and then I kind of forgot it wasn't a Christmas movie. I guess I just kind of assumed it being Home Alone that it was, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, it's not even a Christmas movie." I was like, "Yeah," and then it's it's horrible. Forgot Scarlett Johansson's in it, uh, but that was that yeah. was funny. <laughs> that was yeah, fun. She had a little rough start with that in North. Yeah, yeah. She uh, she's come a long way since then. Uh, uh, JC, what about you? When did you kind of first? Uh, um, well, I'm the baby. I'm the baby here, so I was actually like eight months old when this movie came out. But you know, it's like I like I mentioned in Dave's podcast, we were actually tackling another 1992 movie, The Mighty Ducks. Ducks. No, I was I was alive for eight eight out, eight out of the years in the '90s. So you know, like Home Alone and one and two were you no, know, they're staples. They're like movies that are that were on rotation in TBS and TNT and all those channels pretty much all throughout the '90s. So you know, I was watching those a lot and like the. The whatever Dave mentioned, it was the, the the toy that Kevin has with the I don't know how to talk boy, yeah, you know, like, th- like those are stuff that my cousins and brothers had, but like you know, that toy was very memorable, and that's always like whenever I would see them, oh, it's the Home Alone, Home Alone 2 toy. So it was just like, oh, it was like I said, it was two movies that I've that are part of my rotation. Now, like, it won't feel like Christmas if that's if I don't watch those two. That's those are two movies that I could also watch. Even it doesn't have to be Christmas. I could watch, and I don't have to watch them back to back. Like I could just feel any day where I could just put on Home Alone two. I don't need to watch the first one before because I just right. like it enough. But I am with both of you. Like Home Alone one, it is it is the better one. But I I also love the second one as well. The the rest I <laughs> don't care if I never watch again. They yeah. have, they, even though the, even the one they've tried to connect them to the first, like having Kevin back or like the one from, was it last year or two years ago? So home, so home last, year. last year. Last year. Last year. Wow, see, that, that, that shows how memorable it was. I thought it was, might have been two years ago, but it brought Buzz back. I was like, I do not care. Like <laughs> I remember. I remember JC with that movie. I got my screening for that screener for that movie the day before it came out. I'm like, oh, so you're one of those. That's a, that's a good that's a good yeah, sign. Like, <laughs> like with that movie, that's not a good sign. Like certain movies, like I know Dave had always mentioned, like I've always like I remember when Scream came out earlier this year and they were like having the embargo like the day before. I was like, hmm. Then it was like, I don't think it's because of the quality. I think it's maybe because they just want to protect the secrets. So right. certain times it's like that, but for home home still home alone, you knew it was because it was just Basura. It's, it's not. Like, it's not good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like it's mm-hmm. not garbage. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I remember seeing this in theaters as a kid, and uh, I remember my mom took me and several of my friends to go see it, and 
I also remember the lead up to the movie coming out. I remember like the teaser poster with like the Statue of Liberty like holding its base, like you yeah. know, doing the whole balloon thing. <laughs> I the that prom- poster. the promotion for it was really cool and it was fun. I remember as a kid what I liked about it, and I might feel differently about this now, but it might be more of like what you know, Christmas in New York, what it feels like. It feels more Christmassy than the first movie in a lot of ways. Uh, I like that aspect of it, of it more, and I love that it's uh like a lot of sequels it's kind of like it's bigger there's more like going on and there's more yeah. uh um and you know that there's some there could be some like issues like because i have a friend that like loved it when he was a kid and he was like it's hard for me to watch this as an adult because there are so many things that just couldn't happen <laughs> in real life <laughs> <laughs> when you're a child especially in like i have i have one <laughs> That's I mean, the like basic plot York. point of the movie, man. Gee, like the basic yeah. plot point of the movie, like there's no way that kid be able to check into the Plaza Hotel. Like, no shit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know. My biggest issue is, especially now, there is no way that, you know how long check-in takes? Like the fact <laughs> that they were able to cover that late and then run it. Like, hell no. Yeah, Ford, and I love- like, remember, they, <laughs> they woke up for, with 40 minutes to drive and to run to, and get checked in and to run there. No, just checking alone takes an hour. Oh, yeah, man. exactly. I do. I do. Um, I did. I do like how he drops the line. I don't remember exactly when. Like she runs the credit card for the room, and he's just like, "Yikes, it actually works." And then she looks at him, and he's like, and just smiles yeah. at her. <laughs> like <laughs> he's like, yeah, no, you know, like, it's shady. So he's what he said was pretty shady, but you know what? Whatever. Let, let him check in. Yeah, I love checking. You know what though? It is like when you're a kid though. It's like childhood fancy, right? It's kind of like you know, mm-hmm. this, it'd be kind of cool to like oh, for sure. be able to do that. Um, of course, you look at it differently when you're an adult. Like this is not fly. Uh, he probably wouldn't have survived <laughs> out of New York at all. Hell no. um, <laughs> not in 1992. I'll say that. <laughs> not at all. It's, it's um, a little white kid from Chicago. But I will. I will kind of. I will. I didn't know that that was going to be your reason about uh, why it didn't do as well as the first one. It is long. Like it runs Surprisingly. Like, way too long for a movie like this. Um, especially uh, because as an adult, it feels like it's repeating the same beats as the first movie. So it feels like it's like the same thing, but like a little longer. And <laughs> I, I don't want to say not as good. Cause I, I, still I, love, I love good. more filler. <laughs> yeah. There's a ton of filler. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it does. You can definitely watching it now. You can feel the length uh, for sure. Because like uh, I think JC said, a family movie like this should not be two hours. No, uh, like come on, like, uh, kids, kids, kids don't have that. Tisha span. <laughs> yeah, like I recently. Span, I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if you guys. Have, I know JC recently saw. I don't know if it was G. Like recently, the new uh, holiday movie Spirited that came out. On yeah, I watched Apple. it. Like, why is that movie over two hours? I don't like, give me yeah. give me one thirty five. I'm I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that. Christmas Carol has is. Do you don't gotta? Because this one did a lot of different things, which I appreciated, which is why I liked them more than I expected. But it's also, you know, could have tripped out a lot of stuff. Like Ryan Reynolds and and, and Will Ferrell meet to like forty minutes into the movie, and that's your selling point. Mm-hmm. Come on, you could have trimmed a lot of stuff to make, make, make it me like at twenty twenty five. But going yeah. on what you said, G, about like, I think the movie does a lot of. I think what this movie does better than the first is the childlike fantasies of like being in New York by yourself during the holidays. Right. Like the first exactly. one is a better movie, but like I don't want to be in a suburbs in Chicago. I don't know what to do. He's just chilling yeah. at home, <laughs> exactly, running exactly. away from the bum. <laughs> exactly. You know what? And I I kind of felt like in the first one he was a bit more afraid at certain points being at home than he was when he was in New York. In the second one, he's kind of like, eh. <laughs> like he got, he got I, guess, I, guess, I guess he's well seasoned. He's well seasoned now. He's he, he, well. I will, I will say. I will say where he was, he'd have less reason to be afraid. Like the That's Plaza true. Hotel, like I yeah, go by true. that area almost once a week. That area is like upscale <laughs> New York. <laughs> I think he's okay down that area. But yeah. the one takeaway, I don't know if JT was going to get into it, was if there's anything that's unbelievable with this entire movie is the fact that there is no way that kid would have survived at Central Park at night. You don't go at to night. Central Park at night. At you do not go to Central Park at night. Yeah, exactly. Especially you're, in the early nineties. You're not meeting any nice pigeon ladies. <laughs> <I don't think. laughs> he across two movies, he encounters like, I mean, I guess the old man in the first one's fine, even though they set him up to be kind of creepier. Yeah, than that, that's, that's, one, that's one of the tropes. So that's one yeah, of the yeah. tropes. I was the same as the first. Man, that yeah. pigeon lady. Man, I have a lot. Like, how is she living yeah. above like this? this like uh orchestra like she's hugo concert hall, and she like wait who is she she's in hugo 
No, I'm saying, remember, Hugo was the same thing, how he lived on, uh, on the top of a nice train station. You're going to, oh, like, yeah. like see Because in my head, I'm like, like you're going to tell me no one does, no one goes up there and sees what's going on? After exactly. shows? I also imagine she's covered in bird poop. <laughs> on, top of, <laughs> on top of all that. <laughs> like, and he's just, like, he's so precocious and, like, eh, I'm, like, I've seen worse, <laughs> I guess. I guess he has. Um... I know I I kind of got to ask you guys this too because like mm-hmm. the second one you know it's it's funny that this happens once in the first one that they like they happen to leave their son by himself um, the way it happens in this one how how plausible do you think it is that this actually happened again and I guess this is kind of like also dealing with like really lax like uh, pre like nine eleven like airport <laughs> security where like he can like exactly. kind of do <laughs> like, <that was> never <laughs> there's a lot that going on and I like I, I always think it's funny that like it's you know in the first one it was like the head count right that's what kind of messed everything up in the yeah first because movie. they kind of the, the the neighbor yeah and oh, then well, like that kid is so nosy yeah and then they kind of <laughs> then he kind of like lost track when he was like running with his family in the second one and then he thought he was following like his dad into like that flight I feel I like just, that this one's more believable. So I don't because I like <laughs> I, the reason I don't JC is like there's no way that kid would be let on board without a ticket. He's exactly. essentially not. He's essentially let it on without a ticket. Oh, it fell. No, nah, man, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're gonna make sure that's your ticket before you let. No, them no, on. but I'm saying like 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 him getting split from his family is more believable because he was actually really he was finding the thing that was his father. Got it. Okay. The other one, the other one is like, come on, like you're about to have a kid. So you know, like you would make sure that Hardy was there. Like until I see all my kids, I'm not gonna like I'm not gonna worry oh, about like, somebody yeah. making a head count. I mean, that so is... if I don't see all four of my kids, I ain't leaving here. That is true. They do the one head count, and she just trusts her. Like, yeah, did you get? Did you see everybody? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, like she doesn't even really like, not, you, yeah. you, not even a double, not even not even a second head count. Like I work, I work in a warehouse, and I always make sure I double count certain things just to make sure. It's pretty wild though that Dyfus has not been on the case of the McAllisters <laughs> at all, at all whatsoever. And I always, you know, I always forget this. Like you would think, like I've never seen the movies before. I always kind of forget that the parents have no idea what he's gone through, and uh, in the first movie and in this one, like they don't know anything about uh, the whole like the robber situation. They don't know any of that stuff, and that makes it kind of We're more robbers. fun when you're a kid. There's no cell phones. <laughs> There's no do cell we? That's true. <laughs> do we ever find out? Like, because. Even though I watch these every year, I don't have a good memory on this one. Do we know what the McAllisters do to afford these trips and this, and this house? Man, it, bro, they, there's even been they don't, about but it. like, but isn't there? Don't they have <laughs> one rich relative that they always talk? Like, is it? Uh... So the first vacation was paid for by that rich uncle in France. Yeah, in France, yeah. The second one was all of them. So it's oh, like, sure. and, remember, it's like it's like it's like the freeloader line that Kev says about bro, oh, no, uncle, cheap steak, cheap steak, cheap steak line. Uncle Frank is the worst relative of all time. He is, and you know what's funny too is that <laughs> they treat him, they treat they treat Kevin like crap in the first movie, right? But it, you would yeah. think because of like, hey, like we left him at home. There's this whole big ordeal. By the time you get to the second one, that maybe things have been repaired a bit, and they're still like he still kind of like has a flip mouth, and they still are like, yeah, like don't talk back to us. Like it's still that kind of like weird like. Uh, dysfunctional family dynamic, even though they, by the end of the first movie, it's like, oh, like, I realized how much I love you, because, you know, I was here all by myself, and I feel like they learned no lessons between the first movie and the second movie. As the baby of six, I can vouch that even through heartfelt moments, your oldest <laughs> siblings will still chop, bust your chops. Like, I'm like, I'll have heartfelt moments. There'll be times where, like, like, we went through, like, some hard stuff, like a family member dying or something like that. And then, like within a month, they'll be they'll be complete asshole because I was a little brother. So like, true. it don't it don't matter. Like buzzes are all over the place, but the one is like were they were they like for them? I always forget like which ones are his brothers because they're just they're all scattered. Around. <laughs> there's so many re- there's nope. so many relatives in the movie. <laughs> yeah, like the one, the one that's actually the one that's actually his sibling plays his cousin. Why? Oh, that's true. Yeah, Kieran Culkin. Uh, yeah, freaking Kieran. Funny. I mean, I Culkin guess so. Cousin. The one so he has a little brother. I don't know, but I'm yeah. like the one that's actually his sibling is not his sibling. I mean, if we look at if we look at anyone that's aged the best, can we talk about Kieran Culkin's hair? Because I don't know what was going on in 1992 as compared to how it looks now in Succession, but that yeah. haircut was not it. 
Uh, not it at all. But you know that that comes with like HBO money, man. Like <laughs> once you start getting HBO money, <laughs> yeah, it's like Jeremy Piven. <laughs> Jeremy Piven, you you watch Jeremy Piven or anything the night like a heat. My man's freaking hairline is really in the middle. He's like, yeah. And, 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 the freaking, and, and, and Entourage, he's, he's, he's looking like a little sex appeal. I'm like, the that's hell? Like, that's that HBO money, for real. Yeah. Um, I think, like, and because at least, you know, in the first movie, when they're met, when they're dogging on Kevin, at least it's kept within the house. Like, by by the second one, like, they they he, they screw up the whole, like, like choir thing uh, at, uh, that they're and the side they order to do it. Him. And they blame it on him. <laughs> uh, like, you know, it's like, why would you want to go on a family vacation with them at, th- at this point? Like, I think I would almost... essentially like, like, oh can we can we say like they committed manslaughter? Because there's no way that old lady survived that drop. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then she did a whole backflip. That's true. On, on um, one floor. You know, it's funny that you mentioned uh, the stuff about the violence because like this one got like a lot more crap for yeah. how violent it was compared to the first one and the first one's pretty violent but there's some stuff in here uh i'm just gonna read like there's one review from the late roger ebert he gave it two out of four stars and he said cartoon violence is only funny in cartoons most of the live action attempts to duplicate animation have failed because when flesh and blood figures hit pavement we can almost hear the bones crunch and it isn't funny this is like this was like echoed through a lot of people that like reviewed it at the time um yeah like the um, about it. gee like sorry like you seen better watch out, and I know I put David on because I, I bought oh, it. I believe that I bought it for him. For me. Remember that there's that whole that, that whole that whole thing that they have about about doing the doing the Home Alone thing with the with the yeah. with the cans to see if it works. Yes, yeah. I mean we we seen the movie, so we know how that ends. And it's true. It's like I'm not saying there was like that was gonna create copycat stuff, but there might Thank be. God it didn't. Have, Thank God it didn't. Thank yeah, God it did. Yeah, it would have ended badly, but I get that review because it's like. You know, like sometimes like, you gotta make it realistic. Like, so I, I, I wonder. I don't know if you guys agree. I wonder if they were able to up the violence and use the excuse that the all this violence was conducted essentially in like an abandoned apartment, so right. kids wouldn't be able to do that because it's not like it's they're gonna run to an abandoned apartment. Yeah, that's the only thing I could. That, and, yeah, that's the thing I get up to because, like, you know, the first the whole stuff with them in the first one is violent, but like. This is way more aggressive. Like all the stuff with the bricks, oh. um, oh, it's like yeah. really no, the, like, the stuff with the the pigeons. <laughs> yeah, like all that stuff is like it. No one survives that <laughs> in no, real life. What's I mean, all... Daniel, now, Daniel Stern was getting eaten alive, basically. I mean, now we know why Daniel Stern did Celtic because he didn't get over those, those bricks that, that were hitting his head. <laughs> You know what though? It is funny because I love how like Joe Pesci like instigates him throwing them, like like you basically like yelling at him, and then like he kind of gets out of the way every time like uh, Kevin throws one down and like uh, he uh, he Daniel Stern gets up taking the hits. Uh, I will say uh, those two are still equally as funny uh, in this mm-hmm. as they are in the first movie. I mean, you you can just tell that they're having a lot of fun, and like I think they were able to have like maybe even more fun doing this because they knew exactly what. Uh, what this was at this point. Yeah, they made me want to put it And like, uh, yeah, they're just all, uh, they're really, really good in this. I think they're hilarious. And, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to figure out if I liked the booby traps in this one more than are in the first movie more. Um, they're definitely a little bit more elaborate, I guess, in this, because <laughs> like they have the callbacks to like the paint cans and stuff, and then like they're like, "Oh, we already did this, you missed," so, like whatever, and then he just throws that like giant fucking was it like <laughs> pipe <laughs> down to <laughs> <him>. <laughs> like, yeah. like that's something that would cause like major chest pains in real life. Like I think every- <laughs> I think these are less believable than the first one. And I don't think they're they're definitely more slap, honest. maybe more slapstick, right? They're really a little yeah, bit more like, I could, yeah. like the one where the the one with the tool chest and it just pops their nose. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then Kevin's literally just lighting a fire with lighting that rope of kerosene and, and well, yeah. So and what, like, go go ahead. So it so it's an abandoned it's an abandoned apartment, right? Um, I guess nothing else is going on. There. Is there anything else go, going on in the street? Like no, no one else. Brooklyn, is? Brooklyn, <laughs> Brooklyn wasn't popping back then. <laughs> So he can get away. Was that Brooklyn, like, JC? Was that huh? Brooklyn, or was that was that Brooklyn or Harlem? No, that wasn't Harlem. And I, can, oh, and I just saw it today by. Which yeah, gets into remember. my ge- which which gets takes me to my geographic point of this movie. Oh so, yeah, do it. All right, so here's the first one. 
Uh, JC, I mean, G, when you came to, to New York, did you go through Newark or did you go into New York directly? Uh, through Newark. Through Newark Airport. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Where he's sitting, you can't see those buildings. <laughs> you can't see New York that way. That's so like one. My, my, buddy, my buddy Lance, when we watched it together <laughs> in New York, he was like, yeah, that's not. I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, Let, you know, whatever. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Like, yeah, there's no perfect view of New York City from there. Um, the second thing, there is in that sequence where they're playing that song, uh, All I Want, uh, oh my God, I forgot the, I forgot the name of the song. Um, the moment when he first gets to New York in the cab and he, and he goes to the door. Oh, yeah. I know you're talking about I like about the song. Them. I can't remember what it's called right now. But um, yeah. that sequence, he gets from, he, from Manhattan. So this cab supposedly takes him to the World Trade Center. <laughs> Chinatown is close to that to, to that area. Yeah. Did he take the train? It's not walking distance. Though. <laughs> it's got a, it's a, it's like thirty blocks <laughs> to Chinatown from the World Trade Center. Did he walk? Did he take the train? Did he get another cab? Like, yeah. uh, what, it, it's just so like ridiculous how he gets from point A to point B. And then if this house, so. Duncan's toy chest is supposed to be FAO Schwartz. I'm guessing they yeah, couldn't get yeah. the rights for FAO Schwartz. So Duncan's FAO Schwartz is located on 59th and 5th Ave. It used to be. Now it's located on at 30 Rock. So 59th and 5th Ave to where that house is that he runs at the end of the movie mm -hmm. would probably take him two hours. <laughs> That's crazy. At minimum. At minimum. <laughs> that that apartment is nowhere near, near Central Park. That's funny, and they're just hoping when you're watching it that you have no basic idea of like what New York is like, or the city's like at all, or how far things yeah, are from yeah. each other. <laughs> or how time, or how time works. Or how time also, works. Also, <laughs> um, the Plaza Hotel does not have a pool, and the Plaza Hotel does not have an alley. You know where he jumps off and they catch. Oh him? yeah, uh, yeah, and they catch him. Yeah, 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 there's there's no back alley in Paul in the Plaza Hotel, either. So that's another little tip. Fun from fact. There. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I've never been. Yeah, that no, yeah. I've been, I've never been. You know, uh, speaking of the stuff at the Plaza Hotel, I do what I do like about the second one a lot is all the kind of slapstick stuff that goes on with like Tim Curry and like Rob Schneider and that oh, whole yes. like hotel stuff. Oh, yeah, that, I that, love that, that seg stuff. That segment of the movie is really good. And I also think it uses the whole like, I always forget the name of the fake movie. Uh, in oh, the Angels. Uh, Angel. Angels. I, Angels with I, Dirty Faces. Yeah, I love I love how they use that in this uh with like, I'm sorry. Uh, angels, hotel. Angel, angels with even filthier souls. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I love how they use that, yeah, at, that. At, with the fake hotel shooting. Uh, oh, so in this funny. one it's like it's so oh, yeah, hilarious. Everybody comes out like, what's going on? <laughs> and Tim like is going crazy. There's a mud man in Oh yeah, room. he's like crawling on the ground. <laughs> Everyone stay in your rooms. Stay in your rooms. <laughs> It's so good. Like that whole section of the movie is like great. I like, but then the, I like this. I like it better here this in the sequel, honestly. Do you think so? What did you say? Like the like the the scene is better in this one, but the but but I like the the ending of the the keep the change of filthy animals. The animal the one, of the original movie. Yeah. But I feel like the hotel setting instead of just like Daniel Stern jumping in the snow, I feel like it has scaring a whole hotel lot, a whole hotel staff. Is like yeah. a better use of that because you're do you're doping more than one person. And I love when they finally get to the hotel, like, uh, and they're scolding the staff, and then the staff's like, "Well, he had a working <laughs> credit card, <laughs> like, like it was just okay." And they let him. Oh like, no, like, 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 <laughs> idiot, like, idiot, idiot! Are you serious? Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> that was his excuse. He had a working credit card. <laughs> And then when they're like, they're like, like, you guys must be like the dumbest people. This lot, there's something about like. Must be the dumbest people to work in New York, and then, and then the one from the Adams family. She's like the best. Like <laughs> oh, you, yes, you just calling you idiot, and you're agreeing. You're the you're, you're the biggest idiots, dude. I totally so I just looked she was up. Family. <laughs> I just looked yeah, up. She's the one that because of it. Um, where Uncle Rob and Aunt Georgette live, where the house is. So it's uh -huh. on Fifty First West, Fifty One West Ninety Fifth Street. So that's forty five blocks away from where. Uh, and um, the New York block is long. And, yeah, so in that area. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. I'm glad that you know that though, because like I wouldn't like I would have been like, oh yeah, whatever. I mean, <laughs> I guess it's not that far. A little kid would, a little kid <laughs> would tell David like, yeah, stop, stop sucking the fun out of this. 
I know, right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> let's let it happen. <laughs> let's let it happen. Um, uh, I mean, uh, there's also uh, some stuff that I guess hasn't uh, <laughs> aged entirely well. There, there is the Donald Trump cameo that's in the movie. Um, which I, I guess. Know was... <laughs> <laughs> which i guess uh I mean, that, was, that was the rule he owned it I feel, he I, owned I it yeah, yeah he, he, owned, he owned it at the time right? he, owned, he yeah. owned it at the time yeah that's the only yeah, way he, he let him film it right if he had like a cameo yeah the cameo and then just standard fees for like having the production there and uh and then they said colkin later endorsed a petition to edit out trump's cameo in the film in 2021 when he replied to a tweet asking to digitally replace trump with an older rendition of colkin <laughs> um <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, also, did not know why the shoot is this long, but it was shot over a course of 144 days. What? It seems like a, it seems like a really long time for like a movie like this. That's apocalypse now <laughs> level shit. Yeah, it sounds like a really long time for something like this. It was, uh, yeah, it said principal photography took place from December 9th, 1991 to May 1st, 1992. And then that uh, John Does Hughes... It give a reason? No, it doesn't. It just, it, and they shot in a bunch of different locations too, like uh, in Illinois and of course New York City. Like, yeah. Um, and then John Hughes uh, started writing the script in February of 1991. He had just gotten a uh, six picture deal with uh, with Fox uh, when uh, they talked about doing a sequel. And Macaulay Culkin was paid $4.5 million for this one, plus 5% of the film's gross to appear in it as well. They believe that is a deal that his dad at the time who was known for being pretty overbearing probably arranged um because apparently he was paid all that, all that money <laughs> yeah apparently he was paid one hundred ten thousand dollars for the first movie oh wow so he got a big sense. <laughs> like he, 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 he wasn't nobody knew that movie was gonna be that that big yeah i mean it made i mean he it made him a star and uh like we talked about like the the first movie's legs like being number one for 12 weeks in a row uh like home alone 2 had a bigger opening weekend like 31 million dollars um and it even like uh grossed 100 million dollars when it's it first like 24 days but then it started to like kind of fall off uh just word of mouth wasn't as good i guess on this one compared to the original because i mean even back then they're probably like well i could just watch the first movie at home it's like the same thing but different city <laughs> yeah it's kind of like the hangover when the hangover two came out it's essentially the same movie as, I mean, as the hangover just in a different location yeah definitely yeah it's like it's like a lot that always happens a lot of like where, where the spy who shot you that stuff was way bigger than, than international man mystery like international man mystery was was really became a hit was on vhs it didn't make a crazy amount of money at theaters that's true and it's crazy it's crazy to think what we're considered like box office like records back then so the 31.1 million dollar opening for Alone 2 was the biggest uh november opening at the time uh it broke the short-lived record held by bram stoker's dracula from a couple of weeks before and then interview with the vampire took it from hollow uh, from uh home alone 2 uh in 1994 and now uh of course black panther is the biggest november yeah, uh, november just, open. Just, so just a couple of, couple of extra, yeah a couple <laughs> of extra bucks <laughs> yeah like, it's always yeah. funny looking at, at, at those at those at those old box offices like in the 80s you could win the box office with like six million like this I think is, the like, most crazy it, how. like if you look i'm gonna look this up while you guys are talking but like i think the most interesting thing um about the box office back then and now is like how many original movies actually can be like and release of the like be released yeah, and exactly. make a lot of money like the highest grossing uh domestic boss box office the highest grossing movie of 1992 was batman returns at 162 million 62 million dollars that's crazy then he but then we get lethal weapon 3 okay that's another sequel but the number three highest grossing film of 1992 was sister act like that movie, <laughs> that movie comes out now. That movie's going straight to Netflix. You know, yeah, yeah. That was the best example was, is the fact that Kramer versus Kramer, which is a divorce drama, was the biggest hit of 1979. And now you can't get any movies like that we'll at all. Never, <laughs> we'll, we'll never, we'll never happen now. Nah, that's, that's, that's a limited that's series. A, that's a limited series. That's a limited or, series. Or, or, that's or, a <laughs> story. Yeah, it's just marriage story. Yeah, they're like yeah, yeah Netflix. Yeah. Like, yeah, send, send it to the theaters. Will make like 20, 25 million tops. Yeah, you're right, dude. There was a ton of like just original stuff that was out like around the same time, and that's hard. Really, that's hard to do nowadays. I guess like they want everyone just want to really compete with each other. IPs. 
what's wild is that I'm looking at the top ten right now, and um, one, two, three, three of the top ten movies were comedies in '92. Home and now, Alone like, and Sunday now, like, and, 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 and now, like, comedies can't make. It's a struggle for comedies, like, to make money. Well, not even, not only make money, but even get like a theatrical release. Now they like send them straight to streaming now. Yeah, I mean, people. I I went to an awards dinner for Bros like a couple of like early October, and Billy Eichner was he was just talking about how frustrated he was with the whole box office of Bros. But it's it's, I think oh, it's not. I don't so blame. Shocking. I don't blame the movie. Actually, I think the movie's very good. But I just yeah. it's. Just, we are programmed as, and not just not us, but I mean like casuals. They're programmed to watch their rom coms at home, unless George Clooney or Sandra Bullock, Bullock or Julia Butter, or Julia Butters, Julia Roberts. Is in <laughs> I like that more. <laughs> <laughs> Julia, Julia Butters, are like Roberts. Julia Butters, <laughs> Julia Roberts. There's like these big old names are in them. Yeah, like no. those are the ones that make money. Like Nancy Myers is releasing a movie in 2023, I believe. And it's on, and and it's on freaking Netflix. Exactly. Like, can you imagine? Like that movie would have been released 15 years ago in theaters and would have been a box office to it. Just shows it's like complicated. I love it's complicated. Yeah, that was probably like yo know, that it's complicated was like that made a lot of money and you know it came. I remember it came out in December, like the year that it came hit. out. It was a huge hit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy. Yo, know, like. We talked about the bros thing, like about why it did didn't do as well as it probably should have. I mean, given the reviews and all that. And I know there I'm were a ton, I know there were a ton I know there were a ton of reasons. And like I talked to JC about it offline about like how like I thought it was gonna make when I saw the initial tracking numbers, I was like, that's really low. Cause I was like, it's getting really yeah. good reviews. Um but then I kind of was like, I think all those things could have been true, like all the things that they were saying. I think timing was a lot of it. I just don't think that yeah, it was a good... that should have been a summer release. I think do I do do it early summer or do it in February, like Valentine's Day. It probably it probably could have worked uh, then. Uh, you know, I do feel bad because he was everywhere promoting the hell out of it, uh, <laughs> just like everywhere. And it even brought really Billy do... back from the street. That's true. And like, but someone made a good point. Like you made the point about like you know Ticket to Paradise and like something like The Lost City and like. You know, if you look at the trailers for The Lost City, it downplays the rom-com stuff and plays up the adventure stuff. It's not really, like, yeah. being promoted as a rom-com. And then, like, and then with Ticket to Paradise, I think they were smart. They, they launched it early overseas, and it kind of built momentum there. And then you have Julia Roberts and George Clooney. And like, yeah. And I mean, I don't think, I don't even think, like, you put any other two people in that movie, that movie is it dumb. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even yeah. think it's, I don't even think it's good, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't like, like I, I, mean, I, I, I like them. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed them, uh, but yeah, I yeah, it's it's the comedy landscape. It just sucks. Like, yeah, and then to, to point that out in that year that like those were the top three movies that year, and like that would never happen right now <laughs> no, <not> at, <laughs> at all, all, at all whatsoever. Do you, do you think? I guess piggybacking off like the legacy sequel of it all. I know we had the one from last year, but do you think if now that Macaulay Culkin is acting a little bit more now, do you think yeah. they'll try to do this again? Like um, a direct sequel, a direct sequel to two type of. I don't thing. think he would want to do it. I, I I don't. I think he like. I think he's smart enough to know that people don't associate those sequels with his two films so much. Mm -hmm. That I don't think he would want to mess up the legacy of it. And also, I don't think he would want to do it without John Hughes involved somehow. Yeah, I mean, he can't be involved. So he's dead. Cause remember, like Home Alone was going to make him star, but. He wouldn't have gotten home alone if if, well, if he, like had, if he Buck, hadn't been right? casted in Uncle Buck. Buck, yeah. Uncle Buck was yeah. Uncle Buck that was that scene that one that back to back he has with, with um John, John Candy. Candy. I heard, I, remember, I heard I read when I was reading on on Home Alone that's like what got him that role. That's yes, true. That's I mean, true. that is true. I, yeah, I think that I think that would be like a one of the reasons why he wouldn't want to do it, like because a lot the creative like kind of minds behind it aren't one of the biggest ones not there anymore. Uh, and but I kind of like one part of me thinks that there could be some convincing there if they really sold him on like a good idea. I mean, like, because as you can see, like, you know, we've had legacy sequels that do really well and they're good. And, uh, you know, I could I could see it working. Like, I mean, it's I, interesting. It, it's interesting. We're living in this world where legacy sequels are a thing. And I remember back in 20, 2015 ish, right before Creed mm -hmm. and before, because I think Creed Fury and, and, and Force Awakens and Fury Road were the ones that kind of set the legacy sequel up to, uh, uh, 
you had uh, on it's road it's on. But I remember yeah, watching yeah. I remember watching my big fat Greek wedding too. And oh I was God. like and I was like, Why are you doing this? What is this? <laughs> this is like And they're already filmed the third. Later. So it's like it, it, where we're positioned at with legacy sequels now, I can I can see if the money is right and the story is right. I I I wouldn't put it past them. Me either. But probably I mean, go to Disney Plus, sadly. So that would be the sad part. If you're gonna do it, I would want it to be done like I would want to see it in theaters. If if it's gonna be done right, uh, to to watch it just go straight to streaming would kind of be. Uh, a little sad. They said Hocus Pocus two to stream it, which they the amount of money they they lost by not sending that to theaters. Yeah, apparently yeah. it's the highest viewed movie on Disney Plus, right? Bro, Jay, like the, the the way. Yeah, like, but what? Yeah, but we don't even know what that means. Bro. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> like they don't give you like hard numbers. They just tell you like, yeah, it is. Like, all right, do you have any like facts to back it up? Like, no, nah. <laughs> just believe us. <laughs> no, just believe us. I'm like, all right, like Netflix. Uh, <laughs> like I think Netflix stuff is like if you watch like, even a minute of a movie, they call it as, as one of the views or some stuff. Yeah. I'm also wondering if you do a legacy sequel. I'm assuming that Kevin would be the parent, right? So he yes, that's what I'm he thinking. Could, he couldn't. He couldn't possibly like be in the situation where he would be the, kid be alone. Like, oh my god! <laughs> like I, I like, let this happen to my own kid. My own kid. Like I did. They did to me twice. <laughs> like and I just did this to my own kid. <laughs> like I just that no, would that be actually be funny to watch. To, we'll get. We'll get. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like, who? Else? I mean, Catherine O'Hare is still around. Like, she would that would be cool. I know, I know the guy who played his dad passed away. Uh, yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. yeah, they were probably uh, trying to do like a Christmas story, story something like, like make it emotional about that, like how. Oh my god! Not anymore. This is that's a perfect example with the Christmas story story just coming out, and I I really like JC. Just saw, I really I, liked it. It was good. They did a really. That. They did a great oh, job yeah, yeah. of making. It's pretty solid. Yeah, it's they rather than just rehashing the same movie it's a completely different take on the on the story so i i thought it was really good yeah because they nice. could easily just say like how 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 ralphie's son wanted a toy that he didn't want and the and the and the mother could have been like oh but you remember when you were a little kid and you wanted that gun like well, how, <laughs> how come you're not letting him have it they could have easily done that and i'm glad they did it um you know it's funny like you were talking about how long home alone 2 is and i looked up who the editor was and it's uh, I don't know if it's Raha or Raja Gosnell, but he is also a filmmaker because um, he directed Never Been Kissed, <laughs> Big Mama's House, <laughs> uh, Scooby Doo, Home Alone Three, and Yours, Mine, and Ours. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, this is the guy that what, cut. What, what a uh, filmography! <laughs> this oh, is who uh, cut Home, Home Alone Two. Um, to kind of like wrap things up, unless you guys can think of anything else. Like, where is this stand on like when it comes to like Christmas movies? Like, is it in your like Top tier Christmas movies, or I think it's in my top fifteen, maybe top ten favorite. Um, it's the, it's what I watch every year, but I don't know where it would rank. It might the first one's obviously top five for me, or top three, I believe it's, it's in my yeah. top three. But I don't know where it would rank, but it's definitely a year to watch for me. Like it's like I said, it's not like I said the beginning. It's not Christmas if I don't watch both of them, right? And you kind of can't. It's it's interesting watching them back to back too, because you can feel like when you're an adult, you can't feel the quality like shift <laughs> when you watch when you watch yeah, it back to back. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, 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 like yeah, as soon as you minutes ago, as soon as yeah. you put in you put in the second one and you press the display button, and you're like, oh, two hours, five minutes. I got minutes. two hours yeah, to go. I got <laughs> like I'm, I'm like maybe I should have started this double feature at four o'clock instead of like eight o'clock. And then David, um, especially David, that David goes to sleep early. <laughs> like you just get through like the hotel stuff and you're like all right i've seen the end before i don't need to watch it the rest is, of it it is interesting though like thinking like where i would place this like i've as i've become older a lot of movies christmas movies that i saw as a kid have completely jumped up as some of my favorites like i would never have said this to, uh, i'm 36 now yeah about 21 years ago when i first saw national lampoon's christmas vacation i was like oh it's fine cool yeah, yeah. but now it's in my top five i think it's oh, yeah because like, yeah, you get the jokes like i get it like running christmas at i mean i have not done that giant of a family christmas gathering but i've done <laughs> giant family gatherings on christmas like it's tough it's tough i see it so like <laughs> home alone 2 would probably be in like if we're gonna count gremlins as a christmas movie probably after oh, yeah we are yeah, okay then it, then it's right after gremlins for me. <laughs> I, I, I just gremlins <laughs> in my top 10 
I just texted my buddy, like, where do you think I would rank Home Alone 2 as a Christmas movie? And he just said, please, dear God, just put it ahead of the holiday. Because <laughs> I feel like you wouldn't. <laughs> Oh, like, I don't. I don't. I, the holiday so overrated. I hate that movie. Oh, I love the holiday. <laughs> full, dis- full disclosure, like I can say this, I may never be invited back on here again. I hate the holiday. I hate. I hate love, love actually. actually. I think those. I think those two movies are just like the epitome of an, of what not to do on Christmas and the anti Christmas movies. I cannot stand those movies. As Jenny stands next to me and she says, "False." <laughs> Two movies. <laughs> I remember I remember this like it was yesterday. It was 2019. We're laying down in bed and Jenny's like, hey, let's watch. I let her pick a Christmas movie. It was December. She's like, let's watch the holiday. I'm sitting there watching this. I'm like, when does Christmas start? What am I watching right now? This is this is not Christmas. What is going on here? And then Jack Black comes out of nowhere and I'm like, no, this is not this is not happening. I actually, I, I actually like that that part of the movie better. I don't. I don't. I don't like. I don't. Oh, I don't you like, really like you like their Lord story. Yeah, I like, also I, like, I, I'm, I'm more. Of, I'm more of a Kate Jag story one. Yeah, you know, I just I buy them as buddies. I just yeah, buy, so I, yep. I didn't buy them like anything yep. more than that. Um, like, and no, kudos to like, him for no, trying. Like, <laughs> like Jack Black would be like the Tinder date she meets, and she's like, ah, I gotta go. I gotta. I, my cat got stuck in the laundry bin. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go home. <laughs> Like I'm good. I'm still laughing at when this Christmas start. That's that's another one that's over two hours. Yeah, it is over two hours. Yeah, it is over two hours. You're right. Isn't Love Actually over two hours? Also, I have only seen Love Actually. Yeah, but that's like perfect. It's like perfection, man. Oh my god, it's so. When you bash on it, I'm like, I haven't seen it such a long time. Oh my god, like I don't remember hating it, but I also don't remember being. I've only I've only seen it once, thanks to Jen. And like I <gasps> picked it apart because these people are so di- unlikable. Like Andrew Lincoln's <laughs> character in that movie, I like want to smack every time he pops up on screen. He's Come on, so you're in, you're in, you're in like and the we, signs, and we have like morphed that. We've morphed that scene into like a romantic scene where he like brings the signs. <laughs> and they're like, dude, your best friend. It's, it's so, <laughs> bro. It's so funny because I remember like this is not Christmas. Really Hotel plays the best friend, right? Yeah, Chuatel. Uh, yeah, please. Chuatel. Yeah. 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 Uh, I remember I remember during COVID, like, it, it's similar to Love Actually in terms of, like, hyping up relationships that are toxic. Like, I had never seen Friends until 2020. Never. <laughs> oh, my God. I used to all get I, friends every day. All oh, I heard was, like, Ross, Ross and Rachel. Rachel. And, you, <laughs> and you know how, and I think, G, you know how much I love The Office and, like, yeah. Pat, uh, him and Jim. And I think that's, yeah. like, that's my favorite TV couple. Like, outside yeah, yeah. of, like, Ricky and Lucy and, like, modern television, it's Jim and, and Jim and Pam. So I'm yeah. watching Friends and then, like, and I'm talking to and Jenny has seen it. She likes the show, and I'm like, these are the two people that everyone wanted together. Like, that's awful. They are probably so like if they the annoying. Like they need to be divorced. They're probably divorced if they ever come back and do a, like a, a rebooted sequel or something like that. They're divorced <laughs> like five months in. It, it's just awful. They're awful people, and same with Love Actually. Like, no, do you think? I gotta ask. This is not a Love Actually podcast, but do you think Whatever. any relationship <laughs> works in that? Does any relationship work for you in that movie? Because I don't think any relationship works. Well, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I almost said the little kid, but that's not really a relationship. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Oh yeah, and much like much like Home Alone, also has really lax like airport security, where he gets to just like yes. run through the airport. <laughs> uh, yes. Really run through the airport. Um, I guess none of them really work, and then they have that whole like. But I still like it. I love like the feeling of it. I guess like the whole movie is just like fucking sweet. Even though if I was to look deeper into it, there are some toxic <laughs> toxic relationships in it. And uh, oh my god, it's 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 kind of like another shade that another rom com that I watched thanks to my lovely wife. That um oh my god, I think JC likes this movie with J. Why should be something Q- that me and G, John, G love? John Cusack <laughs> and Keith Beckinsale. Oh, Sarah Dibley. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, my God. Let me. Don't you bad mouth that movie. This is, this is turning into like a rom com like, post know, on right? my end. Bro, like, I watched that movie with Jen, and I'm okay, like, you're t- was- <laughs> so, like, you're telling me this guy meets this girl on, like, and how many hours is it together? Like, a few hours, right? Nothing crazy. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. A few yeah, hours, like, right? Three, four he hours. develops this relationship with this woman. And because he runs into this lady or finds her number, he's got to track her down. How do you know she's still into you? What the fuck? That's not real life. What's going on? 
<laughs> well, yeah, the, the, the stuff that happens, I'll admit, it's mad, mad it's like, true. but I, I just, I, it's sweet. I love it. Well, it's wish, have it's like, chemistry. it's like wish fulfillment, man. It's just a sweet yeah, little man. man. Like, like, I, and I, that, was a, like, that was a TBS if, special. I'm like, what if some random girl that I met, like, for two hours, like, a couple of months before I met you, just comes back into my life, and we're, like, engaged. At the, we were married. At, we actually, no, we, yeah, we were married already at the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, you know what? I need to see what's going on with this girl. I need to see if it's real. <laughs> Jenny, yeah, Jenny will take care of Turn you into a Cubano. <laughs> But yes, Home Alone um, 2, it's great. Yeah, yeah, Home Alone 2 is really great. You know what? We do all agree that we do uh, still have love in our hearts for Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Uh, oh, yes. Even though even though it might not be as, uh, you know, as good as the original, because the original was something really special when it came out, and it still continues to be for a lot of, like, I thought, like, actually both movies I've shared with, like, my little brother, and, like, he mm-hmm. has yeah. still continues to like him as uh, much as he did when he saw him when he was a kid. Um so yeah, I mean, again, it's hard to get that lightning in the bottle like again with it, but I think the yeah. sequel hold, holds its own, and like you said, it's just too long and kind of follows the same beats of of the original. But I guess it's that whole thing like if it's not broke, don't fix it. So it's like, all right, we'll yeah, just yeah, that's true. <laughs> like we'll do the same thing but bigger. Um, but yeah, oh, you know, one still, thing I gotta say, that yeah, go the title doesn't make sense because he's not freaking home alone. <laughs> like you yeah. could you could just call it Lost in New York. <laughs> no, it's like, true. He's oh, home that, that, I forgot. That's always bothered me. I'm like, he's not home alone. He's literally in New York. He's in the Plaza Hotel. It's that's like, like this is one of those sequels that this this is one of those sequels that would have worked just being called Lost in New York. Everybody would have known that it was a sequel. So it would have been Kevin like McAllister. So it would have been like <laughs> Lost in New York, a Home Alone sequel, like oh, 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 knives, like, 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 glass, <laughs> like glass, like Glass Onion, a Knives Out mystery. Right? Yeah, I think that's what it would be. Yeah, but, it, I, I, but I don't know. But I, I, it's just the title is always is always because that's the old. This is the only one that he's not Home Alone in. That is true. It reminds that me. It reminds true, me. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of those people that gripe about. I still know you did last summer. They're like, wait, didn't they run him over the summer before oh. last? I'm like, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that that, that oh, is no. true. You kn- <laughs> I don't know if you're going to keep this on the recording. Or, I don't know if you're going to keep this in the recording or or edit this out. But I saw I still know what you did for last summer for the first time this year in October. Oh. <laughs> How was it? Oh, that movie was so bad. Didn't you, did you also see that third one too? I did see the third one, but the second one makes me like like Jennifer Love Hewitt is great, of course, because she's amazing. But like yeah, Bradley's why, good. Why, why are you hyping up Freddie Prince Jr.? He's in the movie for about forty seconds. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. It I mean, unless like he, unless he, was, maybe he was busy. He was like, I got, she's all that. I'm filming that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like, know, it, <laughs> like it really, it really, like I thought the movie was perfectly fine. And then, and, and until like, like wait a minute, like when as soon as Freddie Prinze Jr. is like, I'm gonna go get Jennifer. I'm gonna go get uh, J- Julie. And then he just doesn't show up to like the last like five minutes of the movie. Like, oh, so man. that movie, I'm gonna break it. I, I'm gonna leave this in because I think it's funny. Um, that movie is frustrating because if you have like a basic like knowledge of geography, the twist doesn't work. As soon as you hear like what's the capital of like uh, Brazil, and she's like Rio de Janeiro, and you're like, no, it's not. <laughs> like it, like you're watching it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like twist doesn't work. Twist doesn't work. And yeah, it's definitely not. I mean, I will give it this. I think Brandy has like a fun chase scene in it. Uh, that yeah. stuff's cool. Um, She's no, she's no Sarah Michelle Geller, but she, no. gets, she holds her, she holds she holds her own. Uh, like yeah. when, like when Mark, when Mark and I, perfect. yeah, when Mark and I did that 25th anniversary thing for uh, I know you did last summer. I was like that her chase scene is like one of uh, the best ones of the genre. I think Sarah Michelle Geller's, sure. and I know you did last summer. Yeah, I I did last and I don't know if you guys, are, I don't know if you guys touched on it, but I feel like that movie, that director, lightning in a bottle, that he got all these superstars before they exploded. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, like, yeah, it's true. He talked about premiered? it. Yeah, no, it, she had she had filmed all of season one because it was a mid season replacement, so it hadn't. Oh, uh, so like it hadn't by the time she got the part, and then Jennifer Love here was the only one that was really like known known because she was on Party of Five. Party of uh, Five. Uh, yeah. Freddie Freddie Prince Jr. The people knew who he was because his dad was Freddie Prince, uh, and then Ryan Philippi was like basically new. He was just on soap operas. Uh, but yeah, he said that he got really lucky. Uh, they didn't want Sarah Michelle Gellar at first, so they didn't think that she looked like a like a beauty queen. But I guess the director like fought for her. And then like all I could think was like everyone in that movie's good looking, so it's like oh you have you have four good looking people at there like at the height of them like about to blow up. Uh, oh yeah, that's like a perfect. And the, this and the, t- and the timing. Like, 
two months before Scream 2 opens, right when like Buffy season two is like hitting its like stride. Like it's you're right. Great timing <laughs> for yeah, everyone for sure. involved in that. Uh but yeah, you know what what's funny is that like uh a lot of people like when we kind of segue off like this and talk about other stuff that had nothing to do oh, with Oh, okay, that. great, great. So I feel <laughs> no. that could be that wait a lot. No, no, because I'll, I'll actually sometimes will isolate some of these audio clips and be like, yeah, we were supposed to be talking about Home Alone too, but this is what happened. <laughs> um, but that, that's, yeah. what makes, that's, you know, we having fun. That's what makes it fun, yeah. Uh, but thank you guys again for being on to uh, talk about Home Alone too. Uh, as always, you got you both are both welcome back whenever you want to come back on. I have some more anniversary episodes coming up. Oh, so. we, 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 got, we got a special one next month. Oh, yeah, we talked about one, and then... Uh, Unless unless Jenny has her baby, like Scream Two, you can still do that one, Dave, if you want to. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's, it's really close. Yeah, yeah you're Jenny, cutting close on the anniversary. We're, we're, we're close. close. We're three. We're four, <laughs> three and a half, four weeks out. I think I should oh. be able to make Scream Two. Cut, cut, cutting it close, but <laughs> but as always, uh, thank I you guys Jenny, so much. Jenny's like, don't you dare. Yeah, don't miss like miss because you're like recording a Scream. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> <laughs> So awful. They keep looking to the side, like, like, let me not say that wrong. Jay, Jay right here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but thank you guys again, and as always, you can listen to Back to Box Buster on uh, all of our various podcast platforms, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Good Pods, uh, wherever you prefer to listen to us. Uh, we all really appreciate it, and, and uh, we mentioned this before, but we are recording our spinoff show on December fifth, and then once it launches that week, it's gonna. Uh, be uh running every other week while this show runs every week so i'm gonna try to keep up with that as best i can and uh, i'm sure i'll have uh, some help along the way for some really great guests like these so thank you guys so much and thank you for being on again